As I told Ahilan here, you know, he's my old boss. Uh, as I told him, it's always awful to present after him because he's very controlled, very uh, accurate and very precise. <coughs> and I'm all the co opposite. So when I do a presentation, it's more like, um, yeah, it's creative work. And I did it on the plane down here. So excuse me if there's something, um, something wrong here. As you can see, I'm uh, in the program. I'm uh, presented as coming from Global Maritime. Uh, Global Maritime is a, uh, the biggest competitor to LOC. Uh, so Ahilan is Hello. Ahilan is probably happy now to learn that I've left Global Maritime, so we don't compete anymore. Uh, but the good thing with Global Maritime is that they have been working very much with uh, offshore fish farming and I think I would say that they are probably the one who has driven the technology development uh, further than uh, a lot of others. So I've left to form a new company that's called uh, NERD and we are a project development company so I have collected a bunch of old friends from the offshore oil and gas industry because what we see is that there's no lack of capital in the market there's a lack of good projects to put the capital on. So we are now working with project development. And Portugal is one of our key areas where we are working within agriculture. Uh, and we are not only working within salmon, uh, Atlantic salmon, which is going to be the main part of this presentation. It's obviously because that's where the technology development is happening very fast in Norway now, and I come from Norway. Uh, but we are working also with different species like uh, bluefin tuna, and this is awful. Can I have this mic? Is that that? Yeah. It's going on and out all the time, so it's uh, almost. So we are, uh, we are working, as I said, uh, together with Sintev Ocean in Norway. We are looking at bringing technology down here um, because there are specific areas within Portugal that is very beneficial. It comes to climate and it comes to other things. But before I start my presentation, which is going to focus basically on uh, Atlantic salmon, uh, since I, I believe that that's, uh, um, <laughs> that's what I know, uh, it's a small part of the total aquaculture industry in the world, but it's a fast growing and a very valuable part of it. So I thought I should start with a fun fact, which I learned up in Trondheim in a press, uh, and what you call it, uh, Tecmar, which is a technology uh, meetings for uh, offshore uh, aquaculture in Norway in last week. And this was come actually from the Minister of uh, the Sea. Uh, it turns out that the export value of the Nor from Norway by Atlantic salmon is 1.5 billion euros higher than the total export of wine from France. So I thought that says something, huh? So there's money to made, uh, be made on this. Okay, if you then look at the, um, the aquaculture industry, I'll talk a little bit about the market, uh, then I'll go more into the technology and why the technology is being driven like it is in Norway now. So you can see that the aquaculture market, uh, <coughs> and then we're talking about the value of the production, is around 160 billion US dollars. Uh, and for now, the offshore is approximately 12 to 14 percent. You can read the numbers yourself. Salmon aquaculture, which is a, what we are doing in Norway and what we are looking at bringing elsewhere too, <coughs> is uh, representing approximately 5% of the total uh, international aquaculture market. The biggest part of the aquaculture market is in Asia, obviously, and with China and uh, uh, countries around there uh, having the lead. However, um, if you can see on the graph, the wild catch has stopped. From 1999-2000, yeah, there has been no significant growth in wild catch, and all growth is coming from uh, aquaculture. And it's going to be even, uh, even a faster growth. And all predictions say that this is going to be an ever-increasing market. So in Norway, what we have done, uh, I apologize for this, part of this, uh, this slide is in Norwegian, but in 2000. 50, that will be 9 million people. It will increase, uh, demand a 70% increase in food production. The land area is more or less starting to be used. Uh, ocean area has not been used at all. And we see therefore that is a very good possibility to grow uh, industry and develop food production uh, in the ocean. 
And I think Portugal is also uh, in a position to benefit from this. <coughs> Uh, on the left hand, you can see the roadmap that the Norwegian government has put out for um, for salmon in Norway, and it uh, goes from, if I can see the numbers here, from I think it's one. Excuse me, I need my glasses. Uh, this year it was 65 million um, uh, billion uh, Norwegian kroner, six and a half billion euros, and the plan is to have. Uh, between 24 and 25 billion euros in 2015. Uh, that means that we have to produce 5 million tons of salmon. It's a five-fold increase from today. Today we are producing 1.1 million tons. Let's see. So this is the growth of the value in, uh, in Norway from the aquaculture market. You can see that we has grown from almost nothing in 1980 until a very high production and value today. So we are export value today is 64 billion NOx, or 6.8 billion euros. And if you compare it with the Nor Norwegian oil and gas export, which is 37 billion euros, and then I lost something on the slide there, but if you look at the technology e export from uh, Norway, in within oil and gas, it's around, how much was it? Three point no, 3.7, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's almost the same size as, uh, no, it's the double the size of the export value of salmon. So this tells you that this is a very, very, very valuable uh, business and it's high profit and it's a high demand in the market. Of course, it doesn't come without problems. Uh, in Norway now, they have capped, so you cannot increase the, for the moment, you cannot get any more permits to produce. And the reason for that is, of course, uh, we are looking at pollution. It's not sustainable, or it is sustainable, but you need to do things. You're looking at fish lice, which is a big cost and a big uh, reduction of the production in, uh, in Norway. And you're looking at escape. The last one has more or less been sold. But the Norwegian, gov Norwegian government has now said that you know, there's no more permits to be uh, <coughs> uh, given out in Norway to grow salmon. Uh, and the industry is floating over on money, so everybody is desperate to put their money somewhere where they can actually grow it. The last permit that was, uh, was sold in Norway had a value of 12 million euros, and that is for approximately 1,000 no, 1, tons of salmon. So we are now looking at other areas. To, in order to resolve the situation, the Norwegian government has put out a regime where they say that if you develop new technology, offshore technology or technology to address these problems you have, then you can apply and get some what they call development permits. And that is what I'm going to talk about technically in the rest of the presentation because that has fostered a new <coughs> wave of innovation within the aquaculture industry in Norway. So the background is that we want to increase the production from approximately 1 million ton today to 3 million ton in 2030 and 5 million tons in 250. And in order to do that, we need to have new technology on stream, which is, uh, which is not present. So we have these R&D concession schemes where you can apply with a new technology to develop, uh, to solve some of the problems, preferably offshore or other solutions. And then you will be given these concessions or these uh, permits. And if you think about the value of 100 and no, 12 million euros per piece, and you might be given 10 of them, it's a high value and it drives the technology development. So by the closure in mid-November, I think it was the 17th of November, they closed the, uh, the open uh, call for this. And then 140 companies or new solutions had uh, been put forward. And um, I think only four of them has, now eight has been given a c permit and 18 have been rejected. The numbers we see here is not, uh, not uh, up to date. But this is not only on technology. What we see, and I discussed with some of the, the people in the panel here, we see that also there's a development in the production. And I think this is relevant also not only for salmon, but also for other species that you're looking at. You have to look at the whole value chain from hatching in the, or from eggs or from the juveniles up to <coughs> final processing. 
And what we see in Norway now, that there's a tendency to do uh, big smolt, as we call it, or post-smolt, which means that you have recirculation plants on shore, or you have enclosed containment uh, facilities in the sea, where you bring the salmon from the traditional 150 grams, where you normally have put it into the sea, up to almost one kilo before you put it into the open sea. There's two benefits with that. First of all, you have better control of what you're doing. You get the feed factor down. You know, <coughs> offshore you're talking about the feed factor of 1.1 to 1.2. That means for 1.1 to 1.2 kilos of feed, you get one kilos of salmon out of it. And in this closed containment or in these uh, recirculation plants, you have a feed factor of 0.85. And when you know that 40% of the cost of the final product is feed, it has a big impact. So what we see here now is a tendency that um, the traditional way is at the top where you have the smolt, put it into a farm, and then slaughter it and put it into the market. The new way it's going is more like you have the smolt, you put it into a closed containment or a RAS system, you bring it up to one kilo, and then you put it into the, uh, into the sea. And this latter one is interesting when you go offshore, because if you're going offshore, you need to have a stronger fish, and it's hard to put in 150 grams juveniles into rough offshore seas. So I think if you're looking, say, for instance, for Portugal or other countries, I think that probably is, has to be the way you are going. The discussion in Trondheim last week was actually, are we now developing technology that makes Norwegian uh, salmon less competitive? And the answer was yes, because once that technology comes on stream, it will be possible to produce salmon anywhere. And the answer for the, for, and the, uh, uh, the feedback from the business was that, okay, if you're not competitive, we can at least sell equipment. So we are trying to do what the oil industry did with platforms. So uh, from uh, early 1970 till uh, today, and you can see the uh, oil platforms on top, and then you can see the fish farms at the bottom. And then I'll go into a little bit detail about what you can see is coming now. Um, the one to the left, that's the traditional net pen. It's uh, 160 meters radius, no, uh, circumference. No. What do you call it? Yeah. S yeah. Not radius, but um, the area around. Yeah. It contains 1,000 fish, uh, no, 1,000 tons of fish, and the fish stays there for approximately 18 months. <coughs> the new one coming on stream, which I know very well, which is Global Maritime's uh, the last development, is the one to the right. I would say last year, I had in some presentations, then it was on the drawing board and being built. Now it's installed, and I'll show you a little bit more details about that later. Other types of projects is coming also. Uh, the one green one there is a ship that has got 14 consent, uh, consent, it's going to be built. It contains two, two million, no more than that, 14 times one, that's 14 million tons of salmon. When it's going to be offshore, it's going to be anchored and it's going to be uh, swaying in, in the wind and water. Then you have uh, indoor facilities being produced. The one down to the left is Arca Solutions uh, solution for subsea uh, production. It's partly concrete. It will be submerged. And, and I will show you some other examples later. And then you have closed containments. This is marine harvest. You know, they call it the egg. And then you have the, uh, the Salmar uh, fish farm, which is the only one that is now in production. And I'll show you one. So that's this one. Sorry, there were two presentations <laughs> for the other one, so I'm <laughs> just going to continue, yeah? <laughs> 15 minutes is not enough. So I'll, I'll, I'll speed it up, okay, fine. Uh, so I'll just do that. So, so just to compare the size of this. So this is the one that has been built and is installed. It takes eight, eight concessions. That's 8,000 tons of salmon. This is the Goliath platform. That's the last oil platform that was installed in Norway. And this is the cage, and the Goliath platform can go inside it. So it's quite a size. And then I have some pictures for Nuno from uh, ASM. Where are you, Nuno? Okay, this is something for you. 
So this is from the production of the, uh, the fish farm. So this is in China, and it could have been in Portugal, you know? So you just have to look. Putting it together, you can see some of the sizes <coughs> of it. Here's one of the uh, ballast tanks. Here's before it's starting to be put in. Here it's getting in. Here you can see the sizes of it. There's a man down to the left there. You can see the size of it. Here they are put in the accommodation and control room. And then it's finally moved on ship to Norway. This is produced in China. And then it's installed outside Trondheim now in September. So the concept was finished 2013. And when I was here last year, they had just started to produce it. They had still some discussions on the contract. Now it's installed, <coughs> and the first fish was on Tuesday, 28th of September, to start the production. And there was a presentation of it in Trondheim last week. So they had, it's very successful. The fish grow very well. And for you, Antonio, they have 30, no, 20,000 sensors on board this fish farm. They were doing it to the Kongsberg. They're already looking at big data analysis on it, and it's always a, and it's already a discussion of connecting all new facilities in Norway to a big data center to do big data analysis to see how we best can improve. We are looking at autonomous system, and this one is going to be the next one is going to be controlled from shore, so there's no people on board. Other projects coming. This is a closed uh, containment farm. I've been working on this one. Um, it's in production. It's very successful. To the right, you can see the next development step of it. This is another possibility that is being put forward. All these are by Global Maritime. This is a, uh, a uh, special uh, developed fish farm that Global Maritime has done by itself. It's going to be built in steel. <coughs> Looks like this. They also develop uh, the, the, this one. This is a submergible uh, fish farm. I have a video, maybe we should take a couple of minutes to look at that afterwards. Uh, the idea with this one is that, you know, you, this is for 100 to 120 meters water depth. It's a standard rig. Uh, the, the fish is contained in the, uh, in the net th there, and you bring artificial uh, uh, air with you, because they need to have some air. And then you bring it up when it's good weather, and when the storm come in, you bring it down. And if I'm lucky now, it should be possible to activate it maybe. Approximately 200 million euros, I think, for this facility. And everything is autonomous, so you bring in the ships, you bring in the feed, and then you control everything from shore. And it's left alone, and the fish is subsea. Good weather, you bring it up. The storm comes in, you close it down and you bring it down. And when you take the fish out, you just collapse it, you just press it together and you pump the fish out of it. This is kind of flavor of what you can see coming. Uh, it's moving very, very fast, uh, you know, from last year till now, uh, 140 applications for new type of development. This will come on stream pretty fast because there's a lot of capital now in the uh, aquaculture market in Norway. And we are looking at other areas. So, thank you very much. Presentation now, I, I got to ask for the, the other three speakers have to give us an idea what is their own job and, and, uh, and also the, the past. I know that Pedro was living in Asia for 15 years, so he knows aquaculture where, where most of the aquaculture is produced. Andre was running 
fish farms in, in Hurston Pond, in cages in the Mediterranean, and in the recirculation, high, high intensive recirculation systems in UK. And I don't know so much <laughs> about Pedro, but he goes to present him, him, himself and to say how, why you are in the, in a, in a, in a round table about agriculture. <laughs> it must be a, a reason, okay? So Pedro Encarnação with a few words. Good morning to, to everybody. It's a, it's a pleasure to, to be here <coughs> on this conference talking about technology and uh, renewable energies and, and aquaculture uh, and to try to see if there is a synergy between them. Uh, as uh, Pedro mentioned, uh, I have uh, many years experience in aquaculture. I've been in Asia, now I'm back in Portugal. I'm uh, the aquaculture director uh, at uh, Geronim Martins Agro Alimentar, which is a new department of the Geronim Martins Group that is focused on producing uh, some of the products that are then sold in the stores. Uh, in my area, I focus uh, exclusively in aquaculture, so we are trying to develop uh, aquaculture projects uh, in Portugal and elsewhere. And for us, it's uh, quite an exciting time. Uh, we see now the presentation of, of Carl what is happening in, in the aquaculture industry, uh, these new developments on technology. And we see this again from Norway. Uh, Norway has been the, the country developing the, uh, the aquaculture forward in terms of its technology. Uh, and one clear reason uh, that we see is that salmon is the most successful uh, aquaculture industry in the world. Uh, it's not the most uh, produced species, uh, that is carp in China uh, and the tilapia, the low value species, uh, but the Norwegians uh, have made uh, aquaculture a real industry with profitability, with technology, uh, with standards. Uh, and it is very interesting to see now that they are developing from the, the also in, in the cage uh, technology going from the onshore to the offshore. Uh, and this is relevant because the aquaculture industry is an industry that is always been fighting uh, with other industries, namely the tourism industry and the real estate because we need locations uh, on the shore uh, and there's always conflict of interests and we have a huge sea that we can harvest uh, or that we can farm and, and harvest. Uh, the main limitations has been technology. And now with this new development, these opportunities of new development of technology, I think it opens a opportunity to move aquaculture uh, further. Uh, however, we have to be conscious of one thing. Uh, the profitability of aquaculture operations is not the same uh, profitability of, of oil and gas. So we see of all, all these infrastructures and we see that this is huge investments. Uh, and it is now possible because the price of salmon is very high. There's huge prof profit being made in the salmon industry, and that is what is driven uh, the industry uh, forward. Uh, we have, when we look at other species, we have to take in consideration uh, uh, what is the investment, what is the profitabilities. Also, it's not only a question of uh, technology, we are dealing with uh, uh, biology. And we also have to take into account the biolo biological factor. Uh, it's not that we can apply this uh, technology everywhere, yes, but it depends on what are the environmental conditions, what species can be produced, uh, and how they can be produced. So I think there is still a lot of challenges. Uh, the first is to, to, to find the right technology that uh, is able to produce um, uh, the fish offshore. And then it's all the issues of logistics, species. So uh, I think it's, it's very exciting moments, but there is still a lot of work to be done. And I think uh, integration with the, the biologists and the engineers and also the robotics, I think there's also going to be uh, quite an interesting area to develop 
uh, on robotics to have all these remote sensors and operate the the farms from from land. Uh, I think it's it's quite a, a bright future, but we cannot forget about the species and to adjust all these projects and uh, investments to what species can can be produced. Thanks, Pedro, to Andre. Then at the end, we make, uh, we made some comments about all of these. It's better because we have not so much time. Thank you. Thank you. So my name is Andre Andre Bravo. Um, thank you very much to Ivec and to Engineer Antonis Ramento for the invitation to be here today. Um, I've been in fish farming since '95. I've worked in Portugal, Cyprus, Wales, Spain, back to Portugal, sea bass, sea bream, sole, always marine fish. Uh, semi-intensive ponds, uh, intensive flow-through tanks, offshore cages, um, super-intensive recirculation systems, deep tanks, shallow raceways, all, all things you can imagine in, in production systems and a range of species. Um, I'm usually the skeptic in the room when we talk about offshore uh, aquaculture in Portugal. Um, this is not to say I don't think it's possible. It is certainly possible, and Jerónimo Martins is, is doing it. Uh, Ilha Peixe in Madeira has been doing it for many years. There are a few sites that can work. Um, the new technology uh, being developed, as, as Pedro just mentioned, is, is essentially a product of very special, special circumstances in terms of uh, supply, demand, price, uh, not just in the salmon sector, but al also in the oil and gas industry. Um, whether or not that's sustainable in the long term, it's, it's something to be seen. Um, but again, from, from the experience I've had uh, in all different systems, um, I, would, I would tend to support land-based recirculation systems as the preferred option. Now, obviously one can say, well, that doesn't work for all the species, doesn't work everywhere, of course, just like any other system. So the answer at the end of the day is that you need different solutions, different technologies for different, different species, different markets, uh, different circumstances. Um, when, we, when we talk about uh, systems of this dimension, this is obviously not for the small operator, it's for a very large company or a very large investment fund with very significant resources. Um, it's not for the Portuguese market, it's for a wider market. Um, Possibly it has to be seen as part of a wider group of um, producing entities that can then manage supply from different sources uh, to meet uh, client demand. Um, and Pedro knows this. I mean, if, if you're not on the market every single day, there's no loyalty in this business. Your, your clients will just buy from whoever has the product. So, um, you know, if, if our ports are clo closed for two, three days a week, maybe, and I have the privilege of living just in front of the sea um, in the north of Portugal, so I, I, I've seen the weather in the last few days. I doubt that it would be possible to go out there and harvest fish to supply a client. So I do believe that need, there needs to be a mix of um, sources uh, of the same product, like technologies to grow the same product. Um, and at the end of the day, we'll end up having a combination of what you described, the offshore, new, very large uh, structures, um, the land-based uh, <laughs> recirculation systems where you have the super smolts or you have the market size fish and that's happening already. I'm, I'm actually now a partner in a, um, in a new company called Devonian Capital where we are trying to catalyze investment in land-based recirculation aquaculture. Um, and obviously, we, we are being bombarded every single day with new projects for smoke growing, for salmon growing, everything land-based recirculation. So it, it's just different perspectives. Um, at the end of the day, um, my concern, having worked in operations for 15 years, is being able to access the stock, being able to manage the stock, being able to harvest the product when the client <coughs> wants it. And even working on land, I've had days uh, when I was working in, in the south of Portugal where I just couldn't harvest. The wind was so strong, I couldn't get the vans on, on, on the street 
to go to the other farms and, and get the fish to the client. So, you know, um, it's about predictability more than anything else. Um, we will get there. Technology will get there eventually, no, no doubt about that. Um, I don't know, that's sort of general comment. Sure. Hello, yeah. Just a quick comment to what you're talking about getting to the client market. I think there's a different perspective here. <clears throat> and that is that uh, when it comes to salmon farming, it's a global market and it's actually an exchange. So you are not, you're not having a direct relationship with your client. It's like, you know, you sure. go out and harvest and then you sell it on the market. And, and you have fish coming from all different sources with the understanding which addresses the issue. Yeah. Okay, <coughs> I want to ask to Peter, please. Then. Thank you for the presentation. Um, my name is Pedro Pires. I'm coming from Wavec. Uh, my background is uh, mechanical engineering, so I'm not an expert in aquaculture as many of others here in the table. Um, but he, we in Wavec, uh, two years from now, we um, gathered a strategy to also tackle the aquaculture sector and uh, transfer the, the know-how that we gathered for the past 14 years on wave, uh, uh, wind, and uh, other uh, services that we did and research that we did and transferred that technology and know-how to aquaculture. That's why we're also aiming to uh, participate on the offshore aquaculture uh, in, here in Portugal, but global, uh, globally as well. Uh, the next year, it seems it's going to be quite promising uh, if you look to the news. Uh, here in Portugal, and uh, looking also to Carl Stromson uh, presentation, it's like a trend globally. Uh, so we just not—it's uh, not only us that are being amazed with the potential that we have on uh, offshore aquaculture. It's a real, uh, uh, real potential, I believe. And of course, technology-wise, it's still a, a challenge, and that's why what we in Wavec are trying to to help the the. The, the developers or the, the technologies, uh, technolog technologists uh, to, to evolve. Uh, with our background in the sensor gathering and um, uh, uh, platforms to wave interaction, and so we participate a lot in, in Portugal uh, in all the offshore projects in licensing and environmental monitoring. So we have all this expertise in house and we can pr provide some uh, help to uh, make it happen here also in Portugal, some uh, offshore uh, projects in terms of aquaculture.